Hello there and welcome back to another video of the Mets Lead Cap series. I'd like to welcome you and thank you uh, for tuning in. Now I know I haven't uh, been dropping, uh, releasing, uploading a lot of videos on uh, mathematical literacy and a couple of other subjects. But I will try as much as I can to ensure that I break down some of the most uh, complex topics for the remaining part of the year. So in this video, we'll be breaking down some of the mathematical literacy paper two skills that you need to acquire and master to ensure that you pass the subjects with flying colors. So in this video, we'll not only answer the questions, but I will also try to explain some of the concepts that I haven't talked about yet. And hopefully that will give you a sort of an insight into how you approach certain questions, certain topics. And hopefully this will be helpful when it comes to the exams. Right, so without wasting any time, guys, let's get on to it. Right, so we're going to be doing a math lit uh, paper too. And uh, it was written quite recently, actually, as a trial exam in one of the local, local schools around where I reside. That's what we'll be doing today. And I chose uh, particularly this paper because... I really want to demonstrate uh, how you answer some of the very difficult questions that we usually get. Right, so let's start with uh, question one. So we're going to read uh, the statement here. Now, the statement is very important, guys. I, I cannot even emphasize that enough. And it's quite important that you underline, underline some of the most important parts of the statement. That's critical, okay? So the statement says, water dispensers... Okay, so that's what we are talking about here. Water dispensers are a great option for anyone looking for a convenient and healthy way to access clean drinking water at home. So this is what we are referring to. On the left-hand side, we have a picture of a floor standing water dispenser with a water bottle. Okay, so the water dispenser itself is this part, right, along with the water bottle that is right on top of it. And this water bottle over here is illustrated over there on the right hand side. Okay, you have water bottle for the water dispenser, right? So this is the water bottle that uh, we are going to use for this dispenser, right? So if you look at this carefully, this water bottle was inserted into the water dispenser, right? So I hope you can see that it's upside down, right? With uh, this part right inside like that i hope you can see that so this is what we have right we are not only given the pictures but we also have the dimensions okay the sides guys right so i'm just going to try to draw on the left hand side here what we have exactly so this shape is particularly a rectangular prism it's basically a 3d shape that is made up of rectangles right along with the water bottle that is um, inside there Right, now on top of this water dispenser, we have a water bottle, right? So I'm just going to represent this water bottle with a rectangle, okay? It's like sitting on top of that, right? Just like that, okay? We, so, right, so we are also given dimensions there. And that is three dimensions, 32 centimeters, 28 centimeters, and 147 centimeters. Now, the 147 centimeters goes from the bottom of the water dispenser all the way to the top of the bottle the water bottle right not the top of the water dispenser but the top of the water bottle you need to note things like that okay so that's what we call the height okay the vertical dimension the height right so i'm just gonna go ahead and label that that is the height and then you have this side this dimension right over here and then the other dimension right over there and that is 32 centimeters and that is 28 centimeters okay so now what are the names what is this side and what is that side right so you have a longer side and a shorter side right we've already mentioned the vertical dimension side which is the height because this is made up of rectangles, rectangles have a longer side and a shorter side. So the longer side is what we call the length. And the shorter side will always be the width or the breadth 
we use them interchangeably right so that's what we are given there and on the right hand side where we see the water bottle that is going to be used for the water dispenser we have dimensions on the water bottle right so the water bottle uh, looks something like that okay so unlike uh, my drawing here the water bottle has a bottom that looks like it is a circle right so uh, going from there all the way to there so that is uh, 26 centimeters okay and then it has a height okay the vertical dimension going from the bottom of the bottle to the top of uh, top of the cap um, of the bottle so that is uh, 48 centimeters right so that's the height and then you have uh, the width or length uh, of the cap okay so the cap looks round guys right so the bottom and the cap are circles right so this six, so this six centimeter right at the top that has to be a diameter right of the cap and of course uh, the bottom uh, the bottom of the bottle that is that diameter um, of the bottom of the bottle <laughs> so i need you guys to be able to break it down okay um, it's very important that you analyze what you're given don't just rush into the question i mean of course you wouldn't take this much time uh, but note things that's what i mean there okay and then you have this length or this height um yeah a height uh, which goes from this part of the bottle to the top of the bottle okay that is and that is uh, 7.5 centimeters right so that's what we are given guys and again this bottle has the neck or um, if you may say of the bottle inside this water dispenser okay let's uh, get into the questions then so we we have uh, used the information above to answer the questions that follow all right cool 1.1.1 says write down only the letter write down only the letter that makes the following statements true okay so we have roman figure one and it says the unit used to measure volume in the given context is what is used which unit is going to be used to measure volume in other words if we would calculate volume here what would be uh, the units uh, what would be the unit um, of the answer we would get okay so now volume simply measures the uh, the, the the interior space um, the space that is inside the container right okay so if i have a closed uh, container a 3d container by measuring volume i would be measuring the space that is inside that particular container right so now volume is always going to be uh, measured in cubic units so whether it's cubic centimeters whether it's cubic millimeters whether it's cubic feet whether it's cubic inches whether it's cubic meters so on and so on but um, what's important here is that it is always going to be that three at the top over there i give you let's say 20 cubic centimeters so this is volume guys right i've given you volume there now of course volume is also uh, measured in milliliters liters kiloliters and you actually do have a relationship between uh, cubic centimeters and milliliters which is one cubic centimeter should exactly be equal to one uh, milliliter okay now you don't have to know that uh, they will of course offer you that or give you that um, in your exam but you do have to know the conversions right how do i convert from milliliter to liter i divide by a thousand how do i convert from liters to kiloliters i divide by a thousand and then the other way around i'm just going to multiply uh, by a thousand so kiloliters to liters multiply by a thousand liters to milliliters multiplied by a thousand right so this you have to know guys right by heart okay so it's either you are given these milliliters liters or kiloliters or or they can give you the volume in cubic units uh, just as i illustrated there 
right so ensure that you get uh, the correct units guys whenever you are calculating your volume and of course the area will always be in square uh, centimeters square uh, square units let me rather just say that square units so uh, square centimeters square millimeters okay so on and so on square millimeters square meters so on and so on right right so we need to note that so in this given context our dimensions are given in centimeters right and so this means that if we were to calculate the volume then our answer will be will be dash cubic centimeters okay so this would be the correct uh, unit uh, to use there because all of these sides are in centimeters so that means that we are going here with b right cubic centimeters and then uh, roman figure 2 says give the formula used to to calculate uh, the area occupied uh, by the water dispenser on the floor right so which formula would we use here uh, to measure or to calculate to calculate uh, the area that is occupied by the dispenser on the floor so what we are interested in here is the area that the, the water dispenser occupies okay this part how much does it occupy on the floor so we are only interested in uh, the bottom of the, the the water dispenser right so that shape if we were to draw it or separate it it would something that looks like that so that um, is a rectangle right okay so it has a longer side which is the length which is that 32 centimeters and then it has a shorter side which is the breadth or the width okay so that is a rectangle and and we should all know to calculate uh, the area of a rectangle so that is area is equal to length times breadth okay so and of course the answer should be in a square units there so it will be in square centimeters in this case right and that number will tell us how much area does the bottom of the water dispenser occupy on the floor how much space is it taking on the floor so uh, that is what area is and that is what uh, we are measuring there and so in this case we have this area a area is equal to two into length plus breadth and that is not true this is um, a perimeter and b you have area is equal to pi times a radius squared so this is the area of a uh, circle so that's how you calculate that and of course this is a perimeter of a rectangle and then c you have area is equal to length times breadth so we are indeed going with c that's how we would calculate the space occupied by the water dispenser on the floor Right, let's head on to 1.1.2. Determine the radius of the base of the water bottle. Right, the radius of the base of the water bottle. So let's go take a look at this water bottle. So this is the water bottle that we have. We said that it had two circles. It had a circle there. So that cap is indeed a circle. And of course, uh, the bottom of the water bottle is of course a circle as well right so as you can see it does look like a circle so this is what we want uh, the radius of this part of the water bottle so the water bottle has a diameter right of 26 centimeters we did talk about that in order to get the radius we just simply divide the diameter by two so whenever you have a diameter and you want the radius you just simply divide the diameter by two and that's how you get the radius okay so we're just simply going to say 1.9.2 radius is equal to the diameter divided by two so the diameter is 26 centimeters then we're just going to divide that 26 by two that's how we're going to get the radius which is going to be 13 13 what 13 centimeters very important to write down the units let's write that again 13 centimeters so that's gonna be the radius over there so do not rush read the questions carefully read it twice even and then 1.1.3 says it is recommended to drink eight glasses of water per day okay eight glasses of water per day a standard glass contains about 240 milliliters so in 1.1.3 we are told uh, that we are supposed to drink eight uh, glasses 
of water per day, right? Now we are also given another piece of information and this says that uh, standard glass contains about 240 milliliters of space. Remember, uh, milliliters, we use that when we are calculating what? Volume, right? So we are talking about the space that is inside the cup. So a normal cup contains that much space, right, inside. It contains 240 milliliters. Or we can say that in one glass, there's a space of about 240 milliliters. Oh, that volume and then they say determine the total amount of water in milliliters recommended to drink daily so we we've just been told that it is recommended to drink eight glasses of water per day so per day you're supposed to drink eight glasses of water and then each glass contains 240 milliliters how many milliliters or how much space does eight glasses have if one glass has 240 milliliters right so that is a uh, quite a simple one so we just go into so we know that one glass is 240 milliliters so eight glasses must be eight 240s okay so and that's how we're gonna get how many uh, milliliters is or the recommended uh, consumption of water consumption of water per day and i'm going to pull out uh, the the calculator Right, and we're just going to uh, type in 8 multiplied by 240, and that's 1920. So 1920 milliliters. Okay, so remember that's what uh, we wanted the amount um, in milliliters of space that you were going to get in eight classes. Right. So I hope that uh, makes sense, guys. Now you can also calculate in this manner or use uh, the method that I always prefer to use. Um, so we know that one class, okay, this is the piece of information that we are given. One class is equivalent. Okay, so I'm just going to put in there the colon is equivalent to 240 milliliters, right? So this is just uh, simply the conversion or the ratio that I was given, right? One class is exactly 240 milliliters. So basically on the left-hand side, I have number of classes and then at the right-hand side, I have uh, the amount in volume. I'm gonna put in a colon or semicolon right at the bottom of these two. And then ask myself, what am I being asked? I'm being asked, how much space do eight classes have if one class has 240 milliliters right so i'm putting eight on the left hand side because eight the glasses are have to be on the left hand side right okay remember we said that it's glasses or the number of glasses on the left hand side and on the on the right hand side it's the amount in uh, volume or we can just say it's volume okay so this is the information that i was given and then at the bottom i want to figure out how much space does eight glasses have right okay so you can even put in here you can put in um a or v let's say put in v here okay and then what i do next is that i cross multiply so what do we mean by that just take this v multiply that this v by one so v times one any letter if you multiply it by one it's going to be that particular letter it's just going to be 1v or just v okay so if i put if i had put in x here is it was going to be x x times one is x so on and so on and then i put in an equal sign and then i say eight times okay 240 so i just simply so so simply by cross multiplying you just simply multiply the right bottom with the top left and the bottom left with the top right Okay, so V times 1 is V, and then put in an equal sign, 8 times 240, that is 1920. Okay, and because V was on the right-hand side, so that means that what we just found is the amount of space you're going to find in 8 classes. So amount of space, so that is, has to be in milliliters. Okay, so that's the final answer. You can adopt this. I think this is... Uh, one of the most important methods that you can adopt guys um, 
in order to master, really master measurements, the topic of measurements. It's very important. Okay. Just write down what you are given. Okay. Or the relationship between two quantities. Analyze the information and write it as it is. So this means one glass is equivalent to 240 milliliters. And so eight glasses should be equal to how many? And uh, cross multiply. And then that's how you do that. Right, and so let's get into the next question, uh, which is 1.1.4. 1.1.4 says, Justin is drinking eight glasses from 7 a.m. to half past 8 p.m. Okay, right, so this is what we call a 24-hour format. So, for an example, uh, 7 um during the evening, that's, you would write that down as 19, right? So that is a 24-hour uh, format. Right, and so they say, write in 12-hour format the latest possible time that he may drink his last glass of water. The latest possible time, okay, that he may drink his last glass of water. We are, we have We were told that... He will only drink water from 7 in the morning till half past 8 during the night. So, therefore, the latest time is this time. It's at half past 8. Um, it's at 8.30 p.m., right? And so, we just have to uh, convert this from a 24-hour format to a 12-hour format, okay? So, 1.9.4, we know that um, the latest possible time is half past eight but we just have to convert that into 8 30 8 colon 30 but this will not be specific as to is it in the morning or is it at night so the pm has to accompany that to emphasize that you are um, referring to the half past eight at night so um, that would be your answer there 8 30 pm this is the 12 hour format and that is the 24-hour format. Okay, right. Let's uh, uh, carry on then to the next question. So that was 1.1.4. Right, next question. We have a table. And um, assuming we have to match. Right, so it says table 1 below shows a list of mathematical terms and concepts in column A. And explanations and definitions in column B. So we have explanations and definitions column B, and of course uh, the terms um, in column A. Right, cool. Um, and then the question says use table one above and choose an explanation or definition from column B that matches the term or concept in column A. So we are matching as um, we said. We are asked to write only the letter from A to G next to the question numbers from 1.2.1 to 1.2.4. And um, yeah, that's an example over there. So let's start on then with 1.2.1. Right. So 1.2.1 is outcome. Okay. What does outcome mean? So outcome is found in um, probability. And it's, yeah, it has to be C, right? So it has to be, uh, it is a result of an event. And yeah, that is, so outcome, the result of an event. That's 1.2.1 and then 1.2.2, strip map. Right, so a strip map, um, that is D, right? A map of a section of a traveling route so a strip map will not show all other routes or all roads in south africa it will just only show the roads that are in between where you are starting from and where you are headed to so i hope you guys know a strip map um, it's something like this i'm trying just i'm just going to try and draw or illustrate that so it's the map that is that illustrates roads as uh, straight lines like that. So let's say this could be um, a strip map illustrating the route from Johannesburg to Durban. 
Okay, so this uh, could be Deben. So this is shown in straight lines. Of course, you have other roads that you're going to pass and other towns. Okay, I hope you guys um, are aware of this map, strip map. Okay, it is something like that. So it will show you the other towns that are along the way. Doesn't mean that the road is like this. It's straight. It's a straight line. Okay. Roads have their turns and um, ups and downs, so on and so on. But you are not going to find that in a strip map. So you're going to have towns um, right in between the starting point and the finishing point. And then, of course, you're going to have on the left hand side, you're going to have the distance. So this will be zero kilometers. Okay, and then maybe this is 30 kilometers. Um, and then this is, let's say, uh, 40 kilometers, uh, 60. And let's say from, just make an example there, from Johannesburg to Dembele, let's say it's 72 uh, kilometers. Okay. And of course, between Johannesburg and this particular town, it is uh, 30 kilometers. Right. And if you want the distance between these two towns, Okay, let's say this is town A and this is town B. You just simply go into subtract, so 40 minus 30. So that's how you're going to see the difference between um, town A and town B. So that will be 10 kilometers, all right, between town A and town B, so on and so on. And then on the left, on the right-hand side, it will have it will have uh, the, 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 the distance in the opposite way. So the starting point will be here from Deben to uh, Johannesburg and then so on and so on this will be I don't know it's a uh, 32 kilometers so on and so on it will have all of that all the way to 72 kilometers right so that is exactly what a strip map is I hope you guys uh, do know that okay hope you are aware of this map uh, so it, the strip map uh, shows a section of the traveling route and um, it does not show just everything so yeah we are going with D for 1.2.2. And then 1.2.3, we are matching scale. Okay, so scale, what is a scale? Okay, is it A, measure system of measurement? Mm -hmm, no. Or oh, likelihood of something happening or not? No. A system of measurement that uses? Mm -hmm, no. Um, or... It uh, determines, a scale determines how many times smaller an object shown on a plan or map is than its actual size. Okay, so that is exactly what um, a, a scale shows. So it, right, so that means uh, scale, we are going with F there, right? By the way, guys, there's two types of scales. You have a number scale or ratio scale which is going to be in um, one is to whatever number, let's say 50,000. Okay, so for my geographers out there, um, I know you know this one. And then you have a bar scale, right? So a bar scale will have a bar or a rectangle. And um, along that rectangle, it, it will have numbers below it. So let's say that's zero kilometers, that's 50 kilometers, uh, that's 100 kilometers for an example, right? Okay, so uh, those are your scales. And uh, sometimes you get asked what this means. Okay, the number scale. Well, this means that one unit on the map represents 50,000 units. So or you can say one centimeter on the map represents 50,000 50, centimeters um, on, the, on the actual ground. Or in reality, in real life, so it basically so it's basically just showing you how many times smaller is um, this particular object or this distance compared to real life. Okay, so that is exactly what a scale is. And um, you have one point two point four, the imperial system. Okay. Now we have a system of measurements, guys, and this is simply just two systems. So this is 1.2.4. So there's two systems of measurement. You have the imperial system and the metric system. 
So the metric system, I'm going to start with the metric system. The metric system contains units that we use here in SA, right, in South Africa. So you, you're going to see millimeters, centimeters, meters, kilometers, okay, for length. We measure, for an example, we measure mass in um, milligrams, grams, kilograms, and tons. We measure volume as we illustrated, milliliters, liters, uh, kiloliters, and uh, so on and so on. So simply, when you think of the metric system, just think of the, 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 the group of units uh, that we use or the system of units of measurements uh, that we use in, in South Africa. In other countries, they use the, uh, the imperial system which um, in which you will find inches, feet, yards, gallons, so on and so on. So this is a system of uh, uh, units of measurement that uses these. Okay. So now uh, this is what we are looking for though. Uh, we want... Uh, to match this term with a correct with the correct description there the imperial system so um, what do we have here for an example yeah so what do we have here yeah so here at the top it says a system of measurement using inches pounds feet gallons and miles yes exactly so that is the imperial system so the imperial system is a and then the metric system is e okay so this is the metric system right so 1.2.4 is going with a so uh now let's move on to the the next question okay um not the perfect <laughs> uh picture there but uh, i tried um to i hope you can hope you can see these right so this is 1.3 so 1.3 says the Van um, Herten family drinks hot chocolate every night after supper. So that's what they do every night. They have um, a cup of hot chocolate. And then they saw an advertisement of take a lot for a bigger container of hot chocolate on the television. So, so whatever container that they were using, they actually want a bigger one and they saw this from an advertisement in um from an advertisement of take a lot right and then uh the bigger container and the smaller container they usually buy is shown below so these are the containers that they usually buy and i also have another illustration right here so this is a better one because you couldn't see that is actually like a bucket yeah you couldn't actually see that this is uh, actually a bucket right so that's what we have <clears throat> we have a 1.75 kilogram nestle hot chocolate on the left hand side and the price is given down below is 239 rands and then on the right hand side you have a 500 gram uh, nestle hot chocolate right and the price is 89 89.99 rands and then we have a note there at the bottom which says each recommended serving per person uses 20 gram of hot chocolate recommended serving so this is the recommended serving uh, that we are given there again guys it's uh, very important to read everything okay read everything that is in that box okay okay that is a 1.75 kg that is a 500 gram so i'm guessing that this is what they were drinking and then this is what they want because this is the bigger one, right? So this is the bigger um, container. 1,75 kilogram is bigger than 500 gram, right? Let's head on to the questions then. Use the information above and answer the questions that follow. All right. Now, 1.3.1 says, name the shape of the lid of the 1,75 kilogram container. The shape of the lid. Uh, let's look at these uh, diagrams so the 1.75 kilogram this is the 1.75 kilogram right hope you can see it and we want the shape of the lead okay what shape is the lead if i were to look at this right at the top 
what would I see? Would I see a square? Would I see a triangle? Okay, would I see a rectangle? Okay, what would I see? I would definitely see a, a circle, right, guys? So this, these are those uh, containers that have round uh, leads. So that is uh, indeed a circle over there. Okay, I hope you can see that. It is uh, clear even from the side view that it is a circle. Okay, so that's what uh, we write down there. Circle, the 1.75 kg. Right, so that's 1.3.1 circle. Let me rather write on the left hand side guys because I don't want to be really messy and then when 1.3.2 uh, says write down the mass of the 1.75 kg national hot chocolate in grams okay in grams so basically we're just converting uh, this 1.75 kilogram to grams right so this is about conversion right guys i uh, hope that you know that um, and you are supposed to know this by heart the units we have under mass is milligrams grams uh, kilograms and ton and going from the smaller unit to the bigger unit you're always going to divide right by a thousand so you divide simply by a thousand in all of these going from grams to kilogram divide by a thousand kilogram to ton divide by a thousand and then the other way around from a bigger unit of measurement to a smaller unit of measurement you're going to multiply by the same conversion factor which is a thousand kilogram to gram times by a thousand gram to milligram times by a thousand so this is what you should know by heart okay they are not going to give you this you have to know them by heart so we want to convert from kilogram to gram so in other words we are multiplying okay so we're going to take that 1.75 kilogram and multiply that by a thousand so 1.75 multiply that by a thousand so take out our calculator and say one let's zoom out a bit going to say 1,75 times a thousand and that is 1,750 right so me in there 1,750 watt grams and then 1.3.3 says calculate how many servings can you get from the 500 gram bottle if you follow the recommended serving okay how many servings can i get uh, from this um, if I follow this recommendation, remember we said that each person is supposed to, is recommended uh, 20 grams of hot chocolate per serving, right? So, in other words, we are asking how many 20 grams are we going to get out of this 500 gram? If we are using the recommended serving, how many servings are we going to get here? The maximum amount of servings, okay? How many 20s go into 500? Okay, uh, so this means that we are just going to uh, say 500 gram divided by 20 gram. And in, in that way, that is like a mathematical expression of saying how many 20s can we get in 500 gram? Okay, how many servings can we get there? That's another way of saying it mathematically. So we're going to say 500 divided by 20. So 500 divided by 20 and that is 25 and yeah so it's 25 times 25 servings that's the maximum right let's head on to the next question which is 1.3.4 1.3.4 says calculate the cost per kg they want the cost per kg for the 1.75 kilogram container how much uh, does one kg cost so cost per kg means that how much does one kg right per kg so we want the cost of one kg we know that the cost of 1.75 kg is 239 rands but now we just want the cost of one kg so i'm going to implement the method that i illustrated in the in the previous question so what we are given what we what do we know we know that 1,75 kg is equivalent, put in that semicolon, and then it's equivalent to 239 rands, right? 239 rands. We want to figure out 
how much would it cost so we have a cost on the right hand side and then we have the number of kgs okay the amount on the left hand side the mass so we know that um, it's going to cost us 239 for 1,75 kg but how much would it cost us for 1 kg okay so again you can put in any letter there you can put in x you can put in whatever letter you want right so this is how i use this and then just say a multiply by 1,75 that's going to be 1,75 a any letter when you multiply it by a number it's just going to attach next to that number right and then i put in a equal sign then i say one multiplying the numbers right one times 239 and that will be 239 and then because i want a so right so i want a to remain on its own and so basically i need to remove this 1,75 and how do i do that the correct way the mathematical way I divide by it I divide by that 1,75 but whatever I do on the left hand side I should also do on the right hand side okay so in this case this those will cancel and then I'm left with a alone and then a is equal to what so how much is the cost of 1 uh, kg if the cost of 1,75 kg is 239 right so just going to go in there and just say 239 divide by 1,75 and that is 136 we're just going to round off to two decimal places so it's going to 57 because 1 is less than 5 so 136,57 kgs 136,57 kg so this means that no it's not supposed to be kg sorry about that it's 136.57 cents yeah yeah 136 rands comma five seven cents so this is yes um how you do it now guys um if you have a method that already works for you please you don't have to adopt this yeah but if you can please ensure that you practice okay so that you can master this right and then uh 1.3.5 says there is three over four or three quarters of the 500 gram bottle left okay so it it went from being full to being somewhere here three quarters okay so there's this much left um of hot chocolate so this is about three the three over four or three quarters more than a half right and then uh, calculate the mass in grams of hot chocolate that is left in the bottle okay so we know that uh, amount that is left we know that it is three quarters of 500 grams and so that's exactly what we are going to do and it's already in grams right it's 500 grams so uh, we're just uh, going to say three over four off so off that means times um of 500 okay three over four times 500 so get into the calculator and calculate that so three over four is 0 0.75 so because i do not have any fancy calculator i'm just going to first uh, calculate that three over four what is that um, convert that into decimal three over four is 0 0.75 right and so this is the same as saying 0 0.75 times 500 boom there we go so it's 375 what grams right that is left that's the three quarter three quarters there right so yeah that's exactly how we do that